Yo, how are you doing, folks? Welcome to, I suppose, issue, episode. I haven't really decided what to call it. We've very much threw this together at the last minute of uh, Simper Podcast Live from Product Earth. I'm joined uh, by my third guest of the weekend, Laura from Cultiva Kingdom, the yeah. rebrand of Cultiva Clothing. I'm sure we'll get into that shortly why you uh, changed the name. So uh, thank you very much for joining me. Could you tell people what brings you to, uh, to Product Earth this weekend? Sure. Well, I mean, it's just been such a roller coaster with the pandemic, and I think we all just needed that chance to reconnect with everyone and see how the industry was. Um, and yeah, I just kind of came along as a punter this time. We were really lucky last time that we had a stall in, um, and we made like a great impact with hemp clothing. And basically, my position in all of this is just to uh, educate people more about hemp fabrics and textiles and what sustainability aspects that can bring to this cannabis uh, industry. Um, and it's it's something that definitely needs a lot more focus on. So uh, so that's really why I'm here, really, is just representing the women and, and the, the, the fashion. Excellent, excellent. We, um, so as you said before, we were discussing the topics that we'd cover. You said, I only they're really covering sort of textiles. And, but that, that is exactly what is missing from the narrative in the same way that the biofuels or plastics or if we end up just talking about all oh, the THC this or CBD that or hemp this or cannabis that, we lose the fact that the one plant is potential for all of it. I mean, I wanted to get your thoughts actually on um, uh, studies that are coming out of America to show that uh, so-called hemp or low THC cannabis that's grown over 1% increases the cellulose and the fibrous material of it. So I was thinking from a producer of textiles, um, if it wasn't for restrictions of licenses, would you, as it were, produce your materials from cannabis? Yeah, well, it's a really interesting point because in America, for instance, they have huge amounts of cannabis being grown. And I, from my own research, I've seen that they are developing um, technologies which can develop textiles based off the, the cannabis plant rather than the hemp uh, in the, the hemp plant and so when you look at the history of hemp textiles we do always talk about the hemp plant and you're not really looking at high thc strains so that is something that is developing and i have heard about producers where they are looking at this and trying to make it more resourceful when obviously growing marijuana for the medical industry for instance and then using that store for their own purposes but you're right i think the thing that i have definitely learned is that it's easy to say that hemp can uh, be used for so many things but what you see is the strains actually might be more suitable for fiber or for medical um, cannabinoids and therefore actually when you look at the plant you actually really need to look at the strains and as you said the amount of cellulose that are coming out of that stool um, and then looking at the, the way that it's processed and that's obviously a very uh, sophisticated um, kind of process it's in it's been in the making for a long time and it has been done for centuries but we're at that point now where we need to scale it up and it needs to be efficient and and that's really exciting to see that a lot of uh, research is going into that but um, it's not there yet and I think that's kind of where I stand in it that you, we need more people to kind of advocate like yourself you know raise this awareness and show people that cannabis isn't just about getting high it's actually about sustainability aspects and what it can do um, for you know natural packaging or, or sustainable fashion or, or building construction and, and there's a huge industry there which is on the edge of kind of becoming a massive thing um, but what we need is the government really to back it and take it more seriously yeah and it's something that I've I kind of came to as a realization during lockdown was the the binary debates, the the false dichotomies between hemp and cannabis, so-called recreational versus medical, THC and CBD, and it's it's all the same. It's all the same plant, and the more we proliferate these differences, or we speak of them and create unintended consequences, say saying medical cannabis, we're then saying anything that's called cannabis isn't then medical. If we say that hemp is capable of all of these amazing industrial and commercial potential properties, has all these potential properties, we're then saying the dirty skunk weed that the street people are consuming is, isn't then going to be beneficial. Whereas a hybridization, I mean, can you imagine if we took the auto strain genetics that we've got the it's speed and flower of crop um, without a natural life cycle with the fibrous materials of classic hemp, then with some heavy oil saturated uh, indica strains from uh, straight out of the uh, Asian plateau, we, would, we could potentially get all of these base materials and uh, so-called adult consumer product 
and the, the, the medical. So we could get it all from one crop with that vertically integrated infrastructure. And I think the only impediment currently is that, as you said, is the ignorance within the chambers of power because the perpetuation of that is more profitable. Because if they if they control that, oh, hemp is this and you can only get it this way. Oh, yes, you can be a medical company in the UK, but it's 25,000 to pay to play. They get to massage and, and shape the industry before it's really formed. Whereas if we suddenly had a, oh my God, we're wrong. This amazing plant, you can all have it. We could all become millionaires tomorrow. It would change the economics. It would change the um, disaster capitalism, I suppose, that we live under at the minute, which is that limited resources make things more profitable. And I think that this plant in its potential is that you plant a seed and that seed permeates, you get thousands more seeds. And it just, the plant itself, it wants to be here. It grows in every climate, it acclimates to every weather, every UV potential. It is, it's very nature, it is that it, it, it's here to help. That's what it very much feels like. For sure. And I think what's really interesting about the fiber is it is one of the strongest materials known to man. And there's got such a history of, you know, helping us through the war, for instance, making sales from it, making soldier uniforms. And, and these are things that have generally helped our economy and got us to where we are today. You know, hemp has got us here. And unfortunately, from, you know, my research and when I started this journey a few years ago, I, I realized that actually the UK was one of the biggest growers of hemp fiber and we were big big players in the in the game, we were exporting it out and suddenly because of the prohibition we lost all of that and the problem is now we have this huge gap of maybe you know 60 to 100 years of education that's just left and what happened was a lot of the um, machinery that we had here got exported to China and China's I mean they've been doing it for centuries but they are well ahead of us and now you know people like myself I'm only 25 but when I discovered this I thought my role here is to bring this back to the UK and, and it's been an interesting journey through the pandemic because Brexit's presented itself with this point of we need to localise our economies, we need to support our ourselves and, and hemp F definitely provides that opportunity of we can grow here, we can make our own fabrics. We have a huge fashioned uh, history here where we, we used to produce cotton um, and weave and, and produce beautiful clothes. And, and we're losing that. People in that industry are, are 80 years old and they're, they're going to die off soon and all those skills are going to be lost. And so it's so vital that we hold on to that. And, and this really is the opportunity. And, and unfortunately, you know, it, it requires a huge amount of money to be put involved. And I'm talking millions to actually get these facility centers up and running. And on top of that, we need to be growing a huge amount of hemp just to make it economical. And what we've seen from Brexit now with import tariffs is it's not economical to import fiber to process. Um, and we have to do it here. So what we need is the government and, and other organizations to completely back this as a, as a massive project where we've, we've got to work with the farmers, work with the textile industry, work with the, uh, the facilities and, and do it in a way that's so uh, economically and ecologically viable. And it, it's not impossible. We just need the right people to do it. Oh uh, yeah, perfect. Yeah, I think they, you, you explored um, w wonderfully the, the areas that, that need less restraint at the minute, less constraint around them because it's too long hemp has had to sit in its corner, CBD has had to sit in its corner, the medical are now sitting in its corner. And it's causing this loss of education and information, as you say. And if we keep criminalizing and demonizing the people that learned about these things because they happen to also enjoy the intoxicating and uh, euphoric properties of THC, then we, we lose their, their, their knowledge to help shape that industry. And literally, we, we could already see the people rotting in, in cells now that, that know how to maximize the, the cellulose potential through certain inbreeding techniques. But then people that know certain extraction techniques that could actually revolutionize the industry, making it far more, as you say, not just economical, but ecologically viable. And that's right. the point of this. Too much of cannabis at the minute is fast cannabis. Right. They, they grow up, they pump it full of water, they pull it full of nutrients under unbelievably powerful light, pumping unbelievable amounts of carbon back in the environment and not sequestering the very carbon they need to feed it. They're actually buying carbon, stored carbon, to pump in the facilities rather than pumping the, capturing the carbon from the environment around it. They're right. missing so much of the potential of this because all they see is the profit. Right. 
different. And it, the, the thing about all of that is it does require also additional investment to set up all of these things, which yes, of course, in the long time is sustainable and you will get your money back, but it is a, an additional cost, which unfortunately just makes these products ridiculously expensive and then business people see it as a risk. And I think really they need to stop seeing it as at risk and they need to realize it's an investment for our future. And it's, it's going to help us survive, basically. Yeah, literally, I made a point. Um, so sort of last night I spoke at the fire, the round, uh, round fire discussion, the fire side thing last night. And yeah, I made, I made the point if it's all well and good as creating medicines and whatever, and therapeutics and saving lives and dealing with, with illness. But if we don't tackle climate change, if we don't stop deforestation, if we don't stop desertification, if we don't stop the, the toxins in our air and our waterways and our food, what's the point of surviving? Because the planet won't be inhabitable. That's very so true. So it's, it's that wider conversation. Uh, yeah. Um, so with that being said, do you think that this year's Product Earth has been quite well representative of the, the multiple facets of the industry? Well, I must admit, it is lacking more in the hemp area. Um, and something that I've noticed, not just today, but in general, the cannabis industry is very good at um, marketing themselves with lots of cheap merchandise and they always go down the, the t-shirt route with their brand on it which is brilliant but what they miss is always that element of well why isn't it made from hemp why are we sat here talking about cannabis and wearing a cotton t-shirt so what i would say is one we are not representing hemp in its true forms and that goes through all of you know even packaging you can do a lot with hemp paper um, and that needs to be a lot more present within the industry, but also just generally hemp textiles. I mean, I'm probably the only person here that's talking about this. Um, and it was lovely to see uh, the women, the weed of women and, and involved in cannabis. And they've got their own tent here. And, and that's really vital that women are standing out more because it's a very male dominated industry. And being here today, I can see there's a huge amount of men, probably, you know, 20% women to 80% men and I think that does need to change as well we need to be more inclusive yeah it seems that I suppose the masculine energy of the plant is uh, egoic and a bit hedonistic so it is more the euphoric and the enjoyment the, the socialization that it creates the tribe the community whereas I suppose the feminine energy of it is it's rebuilding it's healing it's connective and we live in a very binary society in many many ways and I, I hope that the inclusion of all of cannabis will help in some way to make it less binary, far more fluid of a, of a culture. And I mean that in every which way, on every yeah, level, because true. the binary debates in everything causes these false dichotomies. And I'm forced to take sides. I was a victim to this many, I say a victim, I fell afoul to this for many years of going, I'm cannabis, not hemp, so screw you guys. And then I've kind of gone, no, you're talking about all the same things. The only difference is that one word. So through creating conversations and content like this, I think it helps to uh, educate everybody to an uh, to a point of it doesn't matter almost what you call it as long as you're sincere and genuine to all of it and so um yeah i hope that somebody, this conversation has, has, has done that and i would love to get you on the, the podcast longer term to talk about more in detail the, the potential of um, of the plant in eradicating fast fashion which is very quickly choking off the world yes i mean it is literally the second to third biggest polluting industry in the world and the thing that gets me is why doesn't the government take that more seriously? It's a huge problem and, and they, I mean, I, I don't blame them. They, they have to prioritise other things like housing and transport and, and that always comes first over fashion. But actually, when you look at the bigger picture, it's got so much impact and, and, we're, and in the end, we end up importing so much of our fashion over here, which is also a bigger problem because the carbon that's associated with it. So. You've definitely touched on some really important points and, and there's definitely a, not, a lot more when it comes to actually how hemp can solve a lot of these problems for the fashion industry. And I'd love to talk to you more about that sometime. So I'll only keep you uh, a couple of minutes longer and get one more final thought from you. Sure. What would you like, to, well, and I kind of know what your answer is going to be, um, but maybe expand on it a little of what you would like to see here next year. Sure, well, I think really as with highlighters, we need more women and we need to talk more about textiles and other elements. And, and there is other people in the industry who have been working on, you know, the fibre part of the industry, the construction, the paper, the plastics, the textiles, and, and all of that needs to come back together again and, and it needs to be presented more. And, and even just having talks here as well would be so beneficial. I think that's something that's definitely been missing in the uh, programme. Um, and it, you know it is great to hear about the medical uh, 
progressions and, and the CBD and how, you know, novel food, it's really important that the industry is aware of that. But there's bigger things here that we need to discuss and it's so, um, it's so important to include it and I just feel like it, it's lacking. So next year I'd love to see more of that and hopefully I'll be here um, perhaps with some more products. Excellent. Well, I do hope to see you here. So thank you very much for your time. We'll do a little bit of housekeeping on the end of this video. Um, guys, if you enjoyed this video, do please check us uh, out on Patreon, uh, patreon.com forward slash simple life. You can get full episodes of the podcast on YouTube, Spotify, Google, Apple, and the usual places. Check us out on all social media. See you later. Peace. Yeah.